going to share, share our experience, really, and some insight into uh, how our relationship with Sitecore and our Sitecore implementation uh, had, uh, uh, had helped bring around uh, a change in kind of how Oxfam um, manage and, uh, and roll out their, uh, or their digital offering uh, online. Uh, set a bit of context as to myself and the agency I'm from. So from an agency called Code Computer Love. Uh, that's me. I'm, I'm one of the founders, one of three, and uh, director. My, my current role, actually, I think, is, uh, as Brad had said, I, I head up our user experience team. And so kind of uh, uh, yeah, ensure kind of user centricity is kind of at the core of sort of everything that, that, that we uh, develop. Uh, we're from Manchester, sunny Manchester. It's warmer than London today, I'm <laughs> proud to say. Uh, and we're a mix of about 70 full-time staff, um, and that's a mix of uh, planners, strategists, user experience people, creatives, designers, developers, etc. Uh, what you'd expect from a uh, from a digital agency. Uh, what we call ourselves, we're, we call ourselves a, a marketing and technology agency because the services kind of cover a broad spectrum. Uh, but the core of what we do really is, is web design and build. And that's kind of been our heritage and still, is, still accounts for the majority of kind of the work that we do. Um, in more recent years, probably across the last five years, that's spread uh, to be across a, a number of, sort of devices and screens. And that's you know, ever, ever growingly more important in kind of the work that we do. Uh, we also kind of uh, look after sort of managed sort of search and media campaigns for clients as well with ongoing programs. This, these are more about sort of driving traffic and sort of ongoing awareness uh, of kind of the platforms we've developed, um, as well as kind of creative digital campaigns as well. And that, that again, is just all about uh, yeah, awareness, acquisition, and driving traffic to the platforms, which is kind of at the hub of, uh, of uh, all the, uh, uh, the things that we develop. And just to kind of give you a, a snapshot, these are, over the last few years, these are kind of some of the clients that we've been lucky enough to work with, um, again, delivering web experience experiences, campaigns, e-commerce solutions, a, a whole variety, really. Um, but what's today all about? So today is about our relationship with Oxfam and Sitecore. Um, so a bit of background. We first started, we were appointed in 2010, um, and there was two parts, really. We were, uh, uh, we were uh, the first part was, I guess, a complete overhaul of the, uh, the user experience. It was a, a unification, really, of kind of all their, their uh, web estate. And so there was a huge kind of IA and kind of content restructuring part of that. Uh, there was a sort of visually a complete redesign uh, and sort of realignment to the brand as well. Um, and as I'll talk about in a second, we did follow a user-centered design process, so kind of validating kind of our design and our, um, um, our thinking uh, as we went along. Uh, and the other huge part was, uh, was for the first time, was the implementation of a content management system. Uh, and, so, and that was not only, the, not only sort of putting Sitecore in place, but then integrating with uh, all the variety of other systems and platforms they have, which I'll show in a second, which was a huge, huge part of the project, really. Um, and that replaced, to say, that replaced all the things that they had historically. Uh, why is Oxfam, why would you be interested in this, actually? You know, what was the challenge there? Um, the, there was a whole, whole host of different kind of facets to this that made it fascinating. I suppose one of the first things is diversity of their audiences. Uh, they, uh, they have the typical sort of supporters that you'd expect, um, uh, and they would be sort of the donators, the people that would um, uh, respond to appeals. Uh, there's the community fundraisers, the people that would go and run and do sport events and take part with that. There's music lovers that would go, in, go along to kind of music events. Uh, there's a massive uh, festivals and volunteering networks. You know, they probably put most people into Glastonbury, for example, as well as the general kind of campaigning. So it was really broad. And then there's the professional audiences as well that was kind of more, more around uh, 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 that side of the organization too, uh, which kind of meant that there was a huge kind of challenge there. <clears throat> The size of the existing web presence, you know, we, we kind of, we didn't start from, from scratch. You know, they, they had a presence that had been building over a number of years, and I'll, I'll kind of give you a, a bit of a summary of that in a second. Uh, 
The scale of the organization, they were, uh, I suppose, in the UK, the, the size of the organization kind of meant that they were, uh, had been operating in a very siloed manner. Um, and, and that had actually impacted on kind of how they were rolling out sort of uh, their di digital uh, sites, systems, and platforms. And, and the different divisions kind of operated in a very sort of siloed way. So over the number of years, that really had kind of spy spied it out. And was, uh, um, uh, as a part of the challenge was to kind of bring all that back together. Uh, at the hub of that, and to do that, was a huge technology integration piece, and which I'll talk about, which is really interesting. Um, and then um, what we had to try and make sure we'd, we didn't happen again was that the, that the platform got into the kind of the state that it had. And so that had to bring around, I guess, some operational change and a different way of, different way of them working and managing and growing sort of the digital, um, uh, the, the digital products. So, uh, so that was kind of a huge part as well. So just give, give you an idea, uh, we, we have a number, but no one actually counted them all, and they seem to just kind of keep spurting out over time. But we, at last best guess, there was, we thought there was about, historically, about 20,000 hand-built HTML pages. So they, they didn't have a CMS system, so these were all built by a, uh, um, uh, an internal team. They had a whole host of different kind of online apps. There was some PHP, some bespoke apps, some bespoke .NET applications. You use WordPress quite extensively for the blog. Microsoft Commerce powered the shop that I'll talk about. And all in all, there was about 80 different microsites as well. So, uh, I mean, when you we look at the, the variety of the things that they would do, there, there was a huge lot there. So, I suppose it's fair to say, and probably like a lot, a lot of organizations, Oxfam did, did a lot right. You know, they, they were fully utilizing the channel, but it was, it was something that had just kind of grown over time, perhaps without a, a, a kind of a centralized strategy and perhaps without some centralized technology powering that. And so that had kind of gotten to a place where it was kind of unmanageable and unsustainable. Um, and so, so yeah, uh, no, all that knowledge and ownership and management kind of spread across kind of those organizational silos. So our objectives, so I guess from an end user engagement, we want to motivate and inspire visitors to do more. Uh, from a more functional um, perspective, uh, provide kind of unified platform for the whole organization to use. Um, and and part, part of the KPIs were actually to sort of deliver some savings and some kind of uh, operational efficiencies as well and kind of how, how they worked. And then of course, as part of the, the UX process, looking at improving conversion around the shops and donations and all those kind of general signups for events, et cetera. Um, and then, yeah, throughout all that, uh, more audience engagement on p participation. And Oxfam are really about getting their supporters and uh, end users to kind of be actively involved in, in the organization um, and the things that they do and, and support all their work. So, so it really kind of split our work into three areas. Now, today, I'm only going to focus, as it's a site core event, <laughs> I'll focus on the platforms and technology. But, but it's equally in kind of three parts. Uh, the introduction of kind of Scrum and that kind of way of working was something that we brought in with the build, but has kind of manifested its way into kind of the ongoing BAU and kind of and how they now operate. And I say the, the user sense of design aspect was kind of a, a huge part at, at, at the beginning. So. Sitecore as the one integrated scalable platform. So um, I'll give you a, a bit of an overview of kind of some of the, the elements that we've kind of delivered. There's, there's the, core, the core site, the core platform is the main supporter site. Uh, We've also sort of delivered the, we replaced all the blogs, so across the organization, kind of how, how people in the field are blogging and how people across the organization are kind of sharing kind of knowledge. Um, there's also then the shop, and I'll talk about the shop later. The shop is huge. The shop itself, they have about 150,000 unique donated products that are all managed through the shop. So the scale of the shop itself is, is quite impressive. Um, and then we've got some of the specialist sites. There's the policy and practice is for kind of uh, some of the more professional audiences. It's also the education site that's sort of aimed at the te teaching audience. Um, and then we've got a variety of kind of the community fundraising sites. So there's a whole host, and then there's not, not to forget as well, uh, there's the kind of the, the, the mobile optimized version as well, which, which we have of, uh, uh, of everything bar the shop at the moment. Uh, uh, and all that is kind of managed through the one site core CMS instance. And so, so it absolutely, at a very high level, achieves that thing of reusable content, reusable functionality, and, uh, and, and everything being shared and scalable uh, and, uh, and, and used across the organization. 
So one of the other big wins, and it's kind of one of the real huge benefits of Sitecore, was, was the integration of technology. Now, um, Sitecore was kind of the central platform by which everything was kind of pulled together. And this was this is probably a slightly old slide now, and I think there's probably been some, some, some newer things since. But we kind of integrated and made some decisions made that the MS Commerce, which was the e-commerce platform, that would kind of be the centralized back-end system that was powering the shop. And that was integrated, though, through to Sitecore. Uh, there's things like their CRM system they've got full integration with, and that kind of uh, handles kind of all the support for engagement, kind of the, the, the tracking and uh, as, as well as kind of the general shop purchasing and donation histories, etc. Um, we've then got a variety of different kind of social media integrations that we're, again, we're using YouTube for kind of delivering sort of video content throughout, uh, as well as kind of email marketing. There's a recruitment service. And for the search engine, that's, that's an Adobe product, Adobe Search and Promote, and that's kind of used to power the shop search and browse as well. Uh, one, of the, one of the other big, more recent and, and bigger integrate, integration pieces was with Telligent Community, uh, the community platform, which is now Telligent Evolution, and that basically manages the, the online communities where, um, where we've, we create um, uh, dedicated communities for kind of different types of uh, fundraising events, as well as for shops and campaigners and supporters and also sort of the uh, volunteering network as well. So, so there's a whole host there, um, and, and that was really, I guess, one, one of the things that, that, one of the real wins that actually we were able to kind of utilize some things already in place and integrate that through and actually have everything kind of all centrally managed and all, uh, uh, all, all playing nicely with each other. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend the time, we're just going to run you through, I think, some of the highlights of the implementation, really. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but, uh, but hopefully it will kind of get across why, why it was um, a, a real success for Oxfam and kind of what, what Oxfam were able to take advantage of. Uh, so one of the things is the, I don't know, for those that are familiar with, uh, uh, with Cycle, was their use of the page editor. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming everyone here is familiar with CMSs and the concept of templates within a CMS. And, uh, and, and Sitecore is great in that actually it kind of allow, allows you to create what's a bit of a sliding scale, really, of, of uh, I guess, a fixed template to kind of a component-based flexibility. Now, this was of huge importance to Oxfam because the majority of their, um, uh, their content was created by their digital team who were effectively web designers and developers. So they, they were in this great position where they had the flexibility to do what the hell they wanted, <laughs> uh, however they wanted. So there was kind of no, no control really. And as long as they're operating within sort of brand guidelines, they were able to kind of create uh, you know, what, what I always describe as it was a great, a beautiful variety of kind of content um, that did have its own downfalls, but actually but, but that was something that the team was used to work so, so right from, uh, fr from the, the off, it was quite important that there was some element of kind of flexibility and creative control as well. And so there's, there's very much a, uh, 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 I think one of the objectives for the team was actually to be able to give them tools so that they can actually um, have some creative freedom. So if you, you're probably all familiar, if you know Cycle with its page editor, which is really terrific kind of WYSIWYG editing and allows you to, uh, uh, to kind of edit content live, but then also kind of create content, uh, add components and move components around. So we kind of really sort of pushed that really to its limits. Uh, and we worked quite closely with Sitecore on this so, so that we could, uh, we could actually achieve uh, some, some of the level of flexibility, controlled flexibility that kind of Oxfam wanted. So we kind of played with their, um, their layouts and, and we created a, 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 a concept of the sub layout as well. So using those actually, that, that meant that we could almost create any, any kind of number of different kind of layouts and kind of page configurations. Uh, and, and within that, we then created, all the content was created as these reusable functional components. And so I think we created almost in total, by the time we'd finished, almost about 100 of these components. But if you imagine, these are kind of either content containers or they're fun pieces of functionality. So a gallery, a kind of a social media integration, um, a, a donation widget, etc. And so these could be kind of used and placed kind of throughout the site. And pages could be, could be built in that kind of way by, by their, uh, their um, more able development team. Uh, 
I suppose it's important to say on the other end of the spectrum, they, they, you can imagine they have a wide variety of CMS users. On the other end, there's the, there's, there's the more business users uh, and, uh, uh, and people who were kind of more used to kind of updating things like blog content. We created very fixed templates that kind of had limited kind of creative control and, and was kind of more fixed for, for those. So, so we did kind of have this, this sliding scale. But I'll flick through the things that they're able then to create. You can see there's kind of a, a variety of different layouts using kind of the components and having some fix, right, things like the navigation, et cetera, but allowing them to create any number of kind of promotional landing pages or, or, or different types of pages for different events, even down to kind of using things like some of the, um, uh, reusing all the content components within the shop as well for merchandising, and then across the different um, events, fundraising, um, sort of campaign sites as well, all, all the, say, the content components being, being totally sort of reusable. Uh, the other key factor that was hugely important to Oxfam was being able to respond to emergencies. Um, and this is something that historically was, was uh, um, something that was always kind of time consuming, but, but, but for a charity, a uh, sort of global relief charity, being, being first at time of crisis to have a web presence to allow people to sort of donate and sort of uh, uh, and help was kind of, is, is a, was kind of a huge driver too. And so we, we built in literally throughout the CMS a concept of emergency awareness. And so Things emergency mode could be triggered in one place, but then actually at a, a page level, a page editors could, could dictate if they wanted kind of um, site content and components and the look and feel even as well to kind of also become emergency aware. So an example is uh, how we would go from the normal homepage to kind of turning on permanent donation prompts, calls to action, uh, different components, etc. Um, and then there's kind of different ways you can see in which some of the, the, the kind of the emergency branding kind of can filter through the site as well. But all that is literally done at the, at the, the press of a few, a few buttons. Uh, and the other area as well is kind of using a great feature of Sitecore is it's kind of branching functionality for th those that know it. So again, they could create whole subsections within the website all around the appeal based on templated content. So they could very quickly get a presence and get kind of a series of pages that were, that were uh, describing that without the chore of going in and kind of creating those. So perhaps you can see that kind of branch there, basically. Um, the other big area that I touched on was kind of the shop. Um, so it it's ha has about, say, 150,000 um, sort of donated products. And a key thing about the shop is Oxfam, they have about 700 actual physical um, high street shops across the country. Uh, and I think the, uh, the cream of kind of those donated items are then also using a listing tool are, are kind of uploaded through to MS Commerce, which is then uh, almost in real time kind of pulled through to the site as well. Um, so we've kind of got that integration kind of ha happening all the way through. Um, so again, we did use for category pages, category landing pages and subpages and kind of your, your typical, uh, your usual kind of shop journey, um, sort of um, search and browse pages, we kind of used a lot of the templates and components and, and gave them kind of flexibility for kind of using sort of merchandising promotional widgets throughout, all of which again for the first time they were able to kind of promote through the main supporter site as well. So again, that, that concept of sort of reusable components, be there for shop or be there for events or be, be there for uh, donation, etc. cetera. Um, and, and I'll flick through, you can see again, that sort of variety of the different pages that we kind of created using that kind of live integration with commerce, but pulling that through. And this kind of very, very heavily uses the Adobe Search and Promote, uh, which I'll go into in a second. Um, and you can see this is kind of how some of that category is kind of brought through to the site tree and everything is kind of managed in the familiar kind of interface within Sitecore. So the, um, we use the Adobe product integrated that kind of managed the kind of the facets, the filtering and the sorting. Um, so that kind of had some great features, uh, things like autocomplete, predictive search, managing misspellings, etc. Uh, but but that, that was kind of all integrated in and integrated analytics through with, with Omniture as well. Um, the other thing, I suppose, with 700 UK stores, the Shop Finder was kind of a key integration. And again, we used some of the site core components around Google Maps integration, but then allowing things to pull, pull through things like the um, uh, directions and other things, just utilizing Google, really. Um, one of the things we're also doing a, a next phase with the shop as well, each of the shops are having also their own community, so that's going to be integrated through, um, through to the community platform as well as, as they, they, the, the shops themselves do become hubs across, uh, across the country. Uh, and again, you can see very simply how all those shops are kind of all, at the moment, kind of details all sort of cent centrally managed really throughout, throughout Sitecore. 
Um, a huge, huge part uh, was, I guess, the um, uh, the site rolling out across different devices or different screens, uh, and kind of how that would be managed. Uh, so, Sitecore has, I don't know if those that are familiar with it. Um, it has the concept of the different uh, device profiles, uh, and you can create different layout templates based on those uh, device profiles. Um, and so, and, and so Sitecore very much takes an approach of uh, what's known as an adaptive um, uh, sort of um, mo mobile approach. And I guess one of the key questions, you know, the questions that often pops up and, and there's a huge always debate around, and there's everyone's of a mixed opinion. You know, what is the correct approach for mobile and tablets and other screens? Should it be a dedicated site? Should it be responsive, or or this kind of this 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 third adaptive area? Um, uh, and our, our approach for Oxfam was to take an uh, an adaptive approach, and, and we kind of feel that's that's kind of the best because actually it's it's that kind of halfway, it's that part way between kind of being dedicated and having device specific um, uh, or device relevant um, sort of content and. Uh, taking into consideration even things like bandwidth, uh, as well as um, having kind of some of the flexibility of kind of responsiveness and, and what that can add. So, so the mobile site is totally managed with the same, um, using the same site map and the same site structure as the desktop is. And what we actually used, um, because we we'd had we taken the approach of um, the the page, the devices kind of uh, uh, being uh, not the devices, sorry, the approach of the using the page editor to kind of have this very modular component approach. We couldn't use necessarily use the out of the box um, uh, device. Uh, uh, detection and uh, device profiles. So actually what we did instead, we used Sitecore's uh, personalization engine. Sitecore, I'll talk about it briefly, it has an amazing kind of rules engine that's kind of uh, part of the, the, the standard solution. And so we were able to just use that to detect mobile device. And so we used, uh, using that, we kind of used Werfel, which is device detection technology, coupled with uh, some responsive techniques around all the components. Each of the components is responsive, but that then fitting into kind of a, um, a, a, a device-specific uh, detected sort of layout, uh, and all that kind of managed through using, let's say, using the, the rules engine and the, the personalization feature. Um, and as I say, and all the content kind of still managed through, through the one site tree. So th there's no need to kind of create dedicated pages, but what it does give, it gives some flexibility, really, to, uh, uh, I guess, enhance where, where where deemed necessary to kind of improve an experience for a mobile or, or a tablet, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some of that. So that's kind of an example of how, um, how the mobile kind of, uh, have the site translated kind of from the desktop to, to the mobile. Uh, and again, this is kind of some of the things I talked about using sort of the mobile layouts there. But the thing that we use that I say is the, is the amazing rules engine and create a simple rule that could auto detect sort of mobile throughout that. And, and one, of the, one of the areas where actually we'd, um, uh, the benefit of this was actually there was no, there was no intervention need on, on the part of the content editors. Uh, this would all happen automatically. But it did give control, and this is actually one of the benefits that, that, that Sitecore allows, uh, um, you, using Sitecore to pr place the control in the hands of the content editor when using responsive device techniques, which typically actually is the decision made and managed at a, a, a code level by a developer. Uh, so that what this allowed us to do, we, we in this instance that I'm going to show, we created a version of the donation component, and of course the donate journey is a key part of kind of what the site's all about, and on mobile, uh, having kind of a simplified and easy do donation um, uh, function is, was critical, and so we kind of, we use that when we look at the, sort of the, the desktop site and, and the kind of a more uh, mouse uh, sense in interaction type uh, component to something that was just a, lo a, lot, a lot more optimized for touch, and so that was an example where that, that was um, um, a, a content editor could could all, could override and use a different component that was created specifically. So Sitecore gives us this this great middle ground. You've got the best of both worlds. We're using responsive techniques to automatically reorganise content, and that would work across tablet as well. Uh, or or we can give kind of that override and that that um, adaptive approach, as it's known, kind of in the hands of content editors too. Um, Social use of social and uh, and the community is kind of a, a huge part. Again, we 
really just using kind of some of the, um, uh, the components functionality. We created a number of components uh, that were all about sharing, pulling content, social feeds, and kind of sharing and, and, uh, and kind of prompting to share a kind of key, pay, key points throughout the journey, particularly in sort of onward journeys, et cetera. And so all these kind of features are, are kind of in the hands of also in, uh, uh, if required, of content editors to kind of use throughout the site. We use things like we integrated Discuss, which is like another comment system for some uh, on-page on kind of, um, uh, sort of interaction as well. And, and I've talked about YouTube that we've kind of used throughout as well. And a lot of this is also kind of pulled in through the, into the analytics as well. Um, one of the huge areas, um, which is kind of the big social presence, is all around the community fundraising. So Oxfam would do a number of kind of big fundraising events. So you're probably really familiar with the walking and the running events that they do. And they would, they would create these communities around them. So one, one of the big integration pieces as well was, I guess, was single sign-on between the Sitecore platform and the intelligent community platform. And so what would happen is someone could create their, or sign up for an event through the Intelligent platform, uh, so, sorry, through the Sitecore platform, and, uh, uh, and, and that would automatically create them a profile in the community platform, as well as that, depending on the event they signed up for. So for example, if I signed up a team of six people for a running event, it would automatically give my team a, a, our own kind of micro community in the, uh, the Intelligent platform as well, which is kind of part of the broader running event community. So we've got some great kind of interaction happening there. And it's still very, very early days with kind of what we're doing and how we're integrating kind of the community uh, into the site. Um, but uh, uh, and there's, there's kind of more to be developed on that. Uh, but again, we've kind of, you know, as a stage one, we've got that great, that great integration happening. And we're also able to pull all the content through with this, uh, the site called Intelligent Connector, pull that con all that great community content, pull that through as one of our components that, again, gives, puts it in the hands of some of the uh, uh, the capable content editors where they want to uh, display some of that content. So. Uh, and there's some examples of things like some of the, the user-generated uh, galleries and media and things like the forums and the blogs, et cetera, on the, on the community platform. Yeah, and there's kind of the events as well. So there's more detail on the events and also user-generated events that, that they, can, uh, they can all do as well. So personalization, one, it's one of the... The huge benefits as well of Sitecore, the customer engagement platform, is as part of the DMS, is the personalization. Now, we're only just dipping our toe in the water. So this is kind of a very, you know, we're, uh, we had a huge task in getting a load of the, uh, the base platform and a lot of the, uh, um, the sort of infrastructure and the shop and things in place. And we're very much just seeing this as, as the next one of the real focuses in the next stage. But just to kind of give you a bit of an insight of that, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with the power of the rules engine, but it does give you access to any kind, any, a whole number of kind of different facets and pieces of data about a user without, without them necessarily needing to be, be signed into uh, uh, to our system or the platform. Uh, and, and we started to kind of use some of those features, things like just detecting return visitors or visit or sort of, um, uh, any uh, users that have completed a certain goal and kind of prevent present them kind of different content. So we've started really small. And then even down to things like, I think, within some, in the shop, we're just using it for Christmas promotions and just for kind of some of the, some of the content just being sort of time sensitive and, uh, and, and seasonalized. And so just some examples of different content, a different look and feel, basically, based on kind of different widgets around, around Christmas. Um, one of the key benefits of a unified platform, hopefully goes without saying, is, is sort of the speed of change. Now, those of you with a keen creative eye have probably seen, I've kind of used screen grabs, uh, some early screenshots and some, very, some more recent screenshots, uh, where, um, uh, uh, which kind of shows Oxfam in a couple of different states of branding. There, there was, at, mid, at midpoint last year, there was a, um, globally, there was a kind of a branding unification. There was, there was a, a consistent look and feel across all the Oxfam global affiliates. And so uh, we, we had a, a task, not, not, not long after launching the original site, of which we also had to kind of move in line, bring the branding in line with the, um, uh, uh, with the global identity. And so historically, that would not have been possible. With the, with the way the technology was, I, it, would, it wouldn't have been a task I think they would have undertaken. So, so we kind of were able, really, the fact that everything was powered through the one platform, um, we were able to kind of do, do a job that was not possible in basically the the development side happened within a number of weeks, really. So, uh, so it kind of shows really the, you know, it was one of the benefits of that kind of unified platform. And here you can see kind of an example of sort of how that, how that kind of uh, rolled out, really. And this 
was kind of the new global identity. Uh, and we were actually quite fortunate. We'd worked with Wolf Olins, who had developed the offline guidelines, and we developed the global digital guidelines as well for, uh, for Oxfam in International. And, uh, and, yeah, and we've been working with some of the global affiliates at the moment as well, um, helping them sort of, uh, develop their sites. So what difference has this made? Um, so it, it's kind of made a massive difference. Uh, I suppose the point I've not mentioned too much as we're going through it is that point of some of the change within Oxfam. So I think a huge part has been the, the way in which that we've worked and, uh, and using some of the agile principles and using the, the scrum me methodology uh, and really looking at kind of having a, a, a backlog, which is kind of our, our, our roadmap and prioritizing and kind of working to a routine of kind of sprints has brought, uh, has brought kind of some real structure to kind of how site development happens. Um, and, and that has kind of filtered back through to Oxfam and, and, and they've kind of taken on those working practices as well into how, how how the divisions are all bringing their requests through and how those requests are being prioritized and being channeled into our sprints and everyone has this visibility of our of our uh, of our release plan and our, our sprint plan they can see where where their kind of features will uh, uh, will sort of be be developed um uh, there's um uh, there's also things that Oxfam are now able to kind of react to global emergencies more rapidly. There's, I think there may be, there's a, a Syria crisis at the moment, and actually if you look on the site now, you can see that that was, uh, you know, that, that was kind of able to kind of do what we wanted and, uh, uh, and was, you know, achievable almost instantly. Um, we've, we've, we've not yet, um, we've not yet implemented um, the, uh, uh, the shop mobile, but the rest of the platform is all now mobile, um, uh, mobile optimized. Uh, and again, so we're really keen to explore what we're doing with mobile. Uh, and, and I think some of the future plans are really about perhaps innovating more mobile and see mobile as a growth area as well. But again, uh, at least now supporters can access all the whole host of kind of what Oxfam can do uh, sort of on the move. And we're looking to the next phase, look at uh, sort of really optimizing the community for mobile as well, which is kind of one of our, our huge areas. Um, and then the, the shop itself, uh, again, the fact that that's kind of all integrated and the fact that shop content is also integrated to the main site, which is also hugely important for Oxfam. So again, we get some kind of cross promotion across the organization, across the, the silos of, uh, that have been there kind of historically. Um, but, uh, but again, that, that integration kind of going all the way through uh, has kind of meant that, that that has kind of been a kind of streamlined, um, a streamlined process for them. Uh, and then overall, um, it's interesting, we talk about kind of increasing conversion and revenue. Oxfam hugely affected by uh, what, what's happening, you know, what, what are the current emergencies. And so, so that kind of plays a massive, a mass, has a massive impact really on kind of what their revenues are. But definitely across the majority of our metrics, and particularly with some of the engagement and some of the increased conversion, uh, particularly around a lot of the, the fundraising, events fundraising, we've seen massive, sometimes uh, 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 six times increase in kind of some of the sign up and, uh, um, and the participation there. So, and, but we conti we're continuing to, one of the ongoing programs is continual sort of conversion optimization, really. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of key to them, really. And it's kind of one of the things that we believe in is, is after having heavily invested in, in a platform, you know, um, there should be a constant stream of continual optimization. So they'll kind of continue to get the most and the most return from that platform. So that, again, has become kind of one of the ongoing strands as part of their, uh, as part of their, their kind of internal organizational shift, too. Uh, and as I've talked about already, kind of those... Uh, uh, the sort of changing sort of working processes and again even down to sort of the tools for managing that and the visibility of that um, um, uh, and so they really have tried to sort of embrace kind of this agile mindset but for a large organization it's been a you know it's a tricky and slow change uh, and so you know it's it, it's by by no means 100% complete and we're, there, are, there are constant challenges but actually you know as an organization I think they really are um, I think they really are embracing that but but what's great is actually the fact that site core is at the heart of that there's kind of some enforcement there and actually um, there is this best practice that needs to be ad adhered to there's already actually from a stability a technical stability perspective I think we've had zero down downtime at all since the sites first went live I think one of the first uh, microsites went live in I think, I think it was summer 2010 has been uh, zero downtime whatsoever and again that was something because of as you can imagine kind of the mix of technologies uh, uh, technological and hosting hiccups and downtime was was unfortunately a, a bit of a, a repeat occurrence. So, so yeah. So, so the platform itself 
has kind of also brought, brought those kind of benefits. So I think my time is about up, and I think that's about everything from my quick overview. So hopefully that kind of gives you a snapshot of some of the work we've done in action and why something like Sitecore has been hugely sort of beneficial and, and how that program of work has, uh, has, has really kind of changed, changed the way that Oxfam really managed their digital, uh, um, their digital landscape and how they've kind of got a plan for kind of future development, really. So that's me. Thank you.